in the exhibition, we have a number of garments, um, including the dress by designer Michelle Smith um, of Millie that is worn in our portrait of Mrs. Obama. There's a suit that was uh, sewn for Jacqueline Kennedy by Shani Non. And then we have a gown that Mrs. Reagan wore, that Nancy Reagan wore at the second inauguration. This is one of the garments, the few garments that she actually wore twice, <laughs> um, because she also wore it to receive their royal highnesses Prince Charles and Princess Diana when they came to the White House. And it was such a, I remember as a young girl seeing this, it was such a, a, an amazing evening because Princess Diana danced with John Travolta. It was a, it was a really great night. But Mrs. Reagan was, was really known for fashion and for clothing and for her red dresses. And red was her signature color. Right. Well, Mrs. Reagan, of course, was an actress. She had a, in her prior uh, life, of course, and had that sense of style, um, sense of couture, and uh, really brought that elegance, you know, with her uh, and her signature style, including wearing red um, to the White House. It's a color she loved to see herself in. Uh, her beautiful portrait that hangs also uh, in the uh, Verme room at the White House, and now, at least at the time of uh, when we were in the administration. Now, I believe it's in the um, uh, ground floor corridor uh, in the East Wing. This is um, the portrait by Aaron Schickler. The Aaron Schickler who portrait. Who also did the portrait that we have from Time Magazine that's on view. That's right, and and really captures, you know, her and her elegance, and of course, in her signature um, color. Her inaugural um, gown, yes, as you said, had worn, she wore it twice, it was quite beautiful and, and elegant and really seeing it on display, you're reminded of what a tiny uh, person, you know, Nancy Reagan but the perfect um, size too. <laughs> and, and that dress, I asked the textile conservators yes. when they were unpacking right. it, it weighs almost 20 pounds. It is, you know, exactly. I mean, with all the beading and, you know, it's so heavy, but, it, it looks so effortless, or she carried it so effortlessly, of course, on uh, inauguration night of 1985. And remember, that was the inauguration that was canceled earlier in the day. The weather in Washington had been so bitterly cold, so the inauguration ceremony at the Capitol, the parade, all those things had been canceled. But the evening balls uh, did go on, of course, because they were indoors. So. It was just as you know, a spectacular um, view for um, people to have of the Reagans because they were really deprived of it, you know, earlier in the day. But it's really something when you see sort of the clothing of personal artifacts of uh, the first ladies and what they've worn, the capelet that you have of of Mrs. Lincoln's, and you can picture them in this. It just gives you, you know, a sense of who they are, their personalities. And again, I just think, you know, we want to feel a personal collect connection uh, to our, our presidents and, and our first families. And one of the most direct ways to do that is through the president's spouse. Well, I hope that when people come to the exhibit, they, they get that personal connection and that sense of how important these women were, how different they were, and how their lives really, you know, do mirror the history of this country. They absolutely do. I mean, this is an important part of telling our nation's story is through all of those who have had the privilege and honor really to be in public life and in serving the American people. And we want to know as much or we should want to know as much as we can about them. And there are complicated lives and complex stories, particularly our early um, first ladies and our early first families and um, who some were slaveholders, of course, and some had slaves in, in the White House. And we really tried to at the White House Historical Association to tell that story of slavery in the president's neighborhood and, and some of the early occupants of the White House. But our nation continues to evolve as it should, continues to uh, be more inclusive in, in telling our full story. And an exhibit like this really, and the narrative that you've at least captured for each person, really wants you to investigate more in who they were, what their backgrounds were, how they came to be in this position in public life, what they did with it, what they've left behind, what we can learn from them, and how we move forward as a country.
Thank you so much, Anita. This Thank has been you. wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. I appreciate it.